Welcome back for a third episode of Growing a Mango Seedling in a Tube. It's day 87. It's been really nice to have this metal wire rack to tie this tube up against so it won't lose its balance while I'm fiddling with it, watering it, and trying to film it, etc. And the uh, feet can be adjusted. They are loose screws. So I have the back of where we're facing now actually a little higher because the balcony is tilted so these leaves are developing awkwardly the second set of four leaves this uh, big one the first mover is already transitioning towards turning yellow while the other three still retain their beautiful reddish purple tint so these are coming along very nicely I have no doubt that they'll get very long but there just isn't space for them to develop and they'll have to go through the cracks between the very large established first set of leaves which are all different sizes there's seven of the original set of leaves and one small one that has not grown any larger since it came out so I'm spraying with some water now and I don't see as many bugs these days I've removed a lot of the potting mix you can see on the left we have the biggest leaf uh, they're all different sizes and I don't think they're getting any bigger but back to the topic of bugs I don't see as many uh, putative pests as I did before so that's a great thing I think removing potting mix from most of my plants has been a real boon whenever I open the sliding door these days to work on my plants I don't notice um, in the hours after for a day or two just this surge of fungus gnats that have come in and are buzzing around the bathroom lights etc so to spray this it's getting bigger and bigger I always have to turn it and get it from two or three different angles but I still do believe that the spraying is beneficial it helps create a micro environment that's very moist overnight very humid for at least um, maybe 18 12 hours something like that so it's day 93 you can see roots are visible on the sides of this tube about two feet deep so the root system is getting deep it hasn't gone all the way to the bottom yet after three months but it's apparent that the lack of width in the soil column isn't a factor at all in the development so the plant roots definitely prefer to go deep rather than wide and that makes sense because it helps anchor the plant so as you can see there are a few more uh, dots uh, debris or maybe dead bugs uh, on the leaves that happens if I haven't cleaned for a while um, aka sprayed it so um, yeah there's still a bit of bugs um, still a lot of things that want to fly in and feed on this I suppose so as long as I deal with that I think also I've been doing a lot of transplants lately and if I work with dry uh, dirt and sand that kicks up a lot of dust and dirt and that lands on the leaves too so most of that could actually be what we're seeing here the dots but um, as far as uh, pests my leaves are very healthy and everything seems okay so I'm not too worried so this is uh, the biggest leaf. It's long, it's yellow, sort of a yellowish green, and it's uh, as long as anything else, but it's not getting wide, and the positioning is very unfortunate. I don't think it'll be able to unfurl and just be flat like a normal leaf. And these other three leaves are getting long as well. So the stem has gotten longer. The second segment of stem which is still sort of a reddish uh, pink uh, versus the green for everything else and you can see some new leaf primordia developing um, tiny little leaves beginning for perhaps a third set that's the way I think this plant is going to develop it's just going to keep repeating this process but I don't know at which point it'll branch out and how tall this will get in the coming months I think it should get pretty tall a few feet tall as long as things keep going this way so I think at the end of the conclusion of this episode it was mid-July so 
So I still have a few months of warm weather. Typically it doesn't start to really get cold in San Diego County, California until it's maybe uh, December. I mean it does get a little chillier but it doesn't truly get um, anywhere near freezing temps until maybe January. So I have maybe another few months of warm growth. Typically August is the hottest month. September can still be very hot. Things do cool down by October. So that's three months of warmer weather. And I've been thinking about whether I need to take any actions to shield this from potentially freezing temperatures in the winter, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So it's day 98. And as you can see, there is further development. Um, this plant just always looks so beautiful. And the leaves are coming into their own, the second set of leaves. So this is sort of a odd tweener state in which they're sort of transitioning three of them from red to yellow. So they end up looking sort of pink from the back. And this main leaf is taking a long time to turn green. But I have faith that everything will just um, end up the same way as the first set of leaves and they'll get a lot more erect over time. It's not that they're lacking for turgor pressure, or maybe they are, maybe that's just the way they develop, but everything's long and droopy in the beginning. It's just that for this set of leaves, they don't have room to develop. So I was thinking about in nature, would everything just drag on the ground and with the leaf tips sort of rot away because of that, if they're touching wet stuff, uh, maybe. So the leaf primordia are getting longer at the top and these things are just in a perpetual state, the second set of leaves of uh, not finding like an adequate place to be oriented without bending and, and curling. So I hope the third set of leaves comes out better than this. Um, but yeah, the second set is just four leaves. So we have 11 leaves total. If you want to count those at the top that are um, not quite leaf primordia, but you know, they're not quite leaves either, then uh, maybe we have three or four more coming. So these things just kind of sit like that for a while. And there are some odd nodes and uh, notches along the stems. So I haven't really characterized those yet, but I don't know whether they serve any kind of function. Um, and definitely as the tree makes it to become a sapling and gets bark on its stem, then uh, that stuff would all be roughed over and covered up uh, by bark, I think. So this is a very, it's just a very charismatic plant. It's very interesting. And um, um, it never gets old to see this cycle of mango leaves come out and develop. It's just uh, quite unlike any other plant I've had. And I'm really glad I'm succeeding thus far. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to go on for a few months and beyond and hopefully I won't lose a bunch of leaves from the winter cold. Uh, I know this place, uh, San Diego, can get a little colder than the tropical climates. This comes from, say, uh, Thailand, the Philippines, India, but I think it doesn't really get that cold here in Southern California and I am on a, a sheltered balcony position. Uh, but we'll think about that later in a few months, three or four months, when it starts getting cold. I've been trying to grow mango seedlings for three years now. I had some failed germination attempts in 2016 and 2017. So I've come a long way. It took me three years just to figure out the right soil medium to get these things to grow and not to use potting mix. On day 110, I noticed small roots just a few inches away from the bottom on the side of the tube. That means there must be a tap root that's already hit bottom or maybe more than one prominent root that have already gone all the way to the bottom and are probably going to start encircling around the plastic. I don't have any more room for this root system to grow, but I think some small lateral roots, uh, minor roots, will colonize the entire tube. Wouldn't be surprised if they push the soil and sand up a little bit just due to all that volume. So as you can see here, the second set of true leaves are now a light green. They're not as dark and thick as the original seven leaves. Well, maybe except for the seventh leaf, which is still tiny and refuses to grow. 
So this is probably as unfurled and uh, wrinkle-free as these four leaves are going to get because they just had bad positioning growing up. And they're long, but they're not getting thick. I hope they do get thick in terms of width and also the leaf thickness over the coming days. But it seems like there's a set of third leaves coming soon. I don't know if that will operate on a more accelerated schedule now that there are basically 10 very large leaves uh, photosynthesizing. So you can see a notch about an inch from the shoot apical meristem. I don't know what that's about. I know there are things such as extra floral nectaries on, on vines and stuff, but I don't know what that that thing really does over there. So it seems like we might have, uh, I don't know, at least maybe five leaves coming. So that'll add to the collection. I don't know how long this thing is going to keep repeating the same process. Is that how mango seedlings get taller? Uh, don't tell me. I actually want to find out on my own. So it's uh, always a great sight to see new leaves in progress. That's how you know your plant is healthy when you have continuous growth and when you're not losing any leaves. It happened for quite a while with my Joshua tree. It seems to only lose one leaf every few months in its fourth year. So I'm going to do one last spray. It seems like uh, maybe some of those dots that were on in the middle of this episode um, maybe two weeks ago, they were just uh, probably just flecks of dirt and potting mix that got airborne when I was uh, doing all those transplants, I hope. So nowadays I don't really see any bugs on my mango, so I'm pretty happy at the result and I hope we'll have a very uneventful and productive episode 4 coming up. I can't believe that I'm closing in on the 4 month mark of this growing project so soon already. It seems like it hasn't been that long. The growth has been very exciting and I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Who knows how tall this will be at the end of the year. So please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. Thanks for watching.